Well, hello there and welcome to Travels with Jordy. If this is your first visit, my name is Peter Knowles and I live on this classic wooden motor cruiser currently here in Walsh Cove, British Columbia, along with the loving memory of my pup Jordy, all the while fixing it and others up for some pretty ambitious cruising. If that's the sort of thing that you might find interesting, please consider sticking around and subscribing. I'd love to have you. Well then, this week I do finally get around to installing the galley stove and it is a joy to be able to cook on it. In fact, our first serious baked meal will be on it this evening, which is going to be just wonderful. Well, Finn, what do you think of Life Afloat? This is young Finnegan's first cruise and he's been pretty good about it. Hasn't he made his efforts? He's, he's pretty bold. <laughs> <laughs> you coming in, bud? <laughs> he's not that much for swimming yet. Ah, but this is a joyous place. All right, I'll let you get to the episode. I'm gonna go for a little more swim. All right then, time to finally get the propane locker put together and here are all the bits. Um, starting off with a locker itself. This locker is actually a battery box that just happened to be uh, the perfect size to hold two um, 20 pound uh, propane cylinders. And I will find a link for the type of batteries that fit in this box. I bought it locally at a place here in Victoria, uh, again, but I'll put a link down below for that. Um, then there's a number of things that we're going to have to work through. I'll start from front to back. This is a company that's gone out of business actually, but this is my propane safety sensor. And what this is, is a sniffer and it uses this little sensor to make sure that there's no propane leaking uh, down into the bottom of the boat. So this actually has two channels so it can uh, have two sensors. Both of these are actually brand new although this is my old one and um, you put one directly below the stove or I do anyway uh, to catch anything that might be leaking out of the stove immediately and I put another one further down in the bilge but of course in a place where there's no chance it's going to get wet or contaminated in some way uh, gosh forbid the first one has missed it and there's a buildup of propane in the bilge and when we wire this all up we'll test those with a little bit of propane and this will set off a piercing scream to let you know that you've got a propane leak and better yet than that it closes this solenoid uh, here in the propane locker to make sure that the propane stops flowing. Uh, and that's absolutely essential. <laughs> and in fact, is required by uh, ABYC, the American Boating and Yawning Council, um, to certify your boat, for instance, to get insured, also to stay alive. Anyway, um, these components are were already on the boat and I've been using them with my previous propane locker, which was a nasty wooden mess. Uh, although I have bought new sensors for them. I bought them just as this company was going out of business, so it, I, I'm glad I got them. I did, however, buy a brand new regulator for the propane system uh, because mine was looking a little old and sketchy. I bought a brand new pigtail, or I don't know what you call this, basically the feed-in hose from the tank to the regulator. And um, there are some nice little brackets that go with the regulator to mount it inside. And of course, I have a brand new propane hose and it's a single length. In other words, there are no fittings inside the boat. So the only fittings are inside the propane locker and at the actual device, which in this case is the cook stove. So there's no chance of a fitting leaking anywhere in the boat. Now, the propane locker itself has to be put in a place above the water line so that it can be vented drained effectively because propane is heavier than air. So if there was a leak anywhere inside the locker from the tank or from one of these devices, it would then drain out and overboard, which is why you don't want to put this anywhere in the boat where if it was to, where propane was to leak, it would end up in your bilge. Boom. So what you need is a hose and a couple of through hulls. So basically I'll put one through hull in the very bottom uh, of the uh, locker here and the other through hull will actually go through the hull but above the water line, as far above the water line as feasible uh, but low enough to make sure that it's lower than the box and then a hose to connect the two. Now ABYC only requires you have a half inch um, um, overflow hose or drain hose or vent hose, whatever you want to call this. Um, but I like to go with full inch just in case there was actually any leakage. I'd like it to get out as quickly as possible. Okay, so we've got all the systems now. Where are we going to put it? I'm going to put it right here underneath this lazarette right at the back. And um, I've thought about a lot of reasons to put it in different places, but it's a rather large thing. It was designed to fit there, and it means when I take the cover off, I can get at the front half of it and get a cylinder in, slide it along, and drop the next cylinder in. It seems to make 
the least obstructive use of my lazarette spaces here. Um, the one caveat is, and I'll show you in a minute, there is one shiv for the steering system way at the back here, and it will end up being underneath the propane locker, which makes it slightly inaccessible. So I'm going to design the structure for the propane locker and the way it's installed, that it can be removed in five minutes, should I ever need to get to that shiv. Um, the option would be to put it somewhere where there isn't any part of the steering shiv, but actually the other side, the, the port side, is full of steering cables and stuff. And further forward on the starboard side here is all the pumps. So it's really the only corner, and as long as I make sure I can easily get at that shiv and hurry... Okay, 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 okay. Let's, let's start putting this together. Okay, so let's <laughs> delve down into the lazarette here. Uh, it's full of water normally. It's not. It's actually quite dry. I was just rinsing things out a bit here because it was full of a lot of, well, bilgy stuff. Okay, so there's the shiv I'm talking about. I have, um, when I first installed it, I covered it with this rubber, gosh forbid, any debris and stuff would fall on it. And look, there's always debris and stuff in a bilge. Uh, so uh, that has worked out quite well. I've just re-lubricated that with some fluid film, so that's good for another couple of years. Uh, those of you with keen eyes will see I have some delignification in my transom. Well, that's for a future project, no doubt about it. Uh, but otherwise, not actually too bad in here, and as I said, it's generally dry. So, I have to put a structure across about here uh, to hold the locker way up in this space, and uh, exactly how I'm going to do that I haven't quite figured out yet, but I do have some lovely uh, white oak that I brought uh, to do that with, uh, so hopefully <laughs> we'll be able to come up with something very, very structural, very structural. Okay, so I'm going to put some cross pieces in, uh, screwed up into the bottom of the main beams for the sole of the cockpit, and then I'm going to have to put a ledger across the frames over here at exactly the right height, and to determine that height, I'm going to fish a long piece of the oak through, like this, and uh, well, make an effort to line it up and then horizontally, and because it's long, I can extend it over to the other side, and then that will tell me where my ledger is going to be. So this is now perfectly horizontal, we just got to put the ledger under it, and this old <laughs> through hole cockpit drain check valve thing is sort of in the way. <laughs> there we go. It being pipe thread, I am able to rotate it 90 degrees out of the way, which should give me enough clearance. Okay now, so I've rough cut the ledger. It'll sit right in there like that. Uh, but you can see, I'm gonna have to put a bevel on it uh, so it matches because it's sitting on the curve of the hull. Now it's probably a rolling bevel. In fact, I can see that not everything here is lined up all that well. Uh, it's the kind of thing where we do what we can. We do what we can. And we have a nice bevel. You'll remember I also have to cut a little bit of relief out of the back where it's on that proud uh, frame. So we'll just make a little a little notch here. Nice. Okay, let's see how all this fits. The bevel looks pretty nice, close enough for me. The notch is pretty good. Now I just have to mark it off for the frames. So I can do some counterbores in this. All right, so I know where it is at the back. Now all I'll do is use this handy level to set it up at the front. Now you say, okay, Peter, a level on a boat? Well, actually, fore and aft, a level is not that ridiculous because I just put the level on the uh, sole uh, and I checked out where the bubble was. And now all I have to do is put it in the same place here. Basically right there. So, oh, carrying on with this system, I'll put that right on the line and drill a counterbore. <laughs> Using some lovely bronze screws that were gifted to me. Through 
The reason I'm using a hand screwdriver is because these bronze screws, they're not that hard to break. So uh, I want to make sure I just torque them just perfectly. Uh, number 14 screws, nice and deep, but after all, uh, they are <laughs> a little bit vulnerable. This is indeed awkward. I'm compromising on the uh, hand screwdriver work because what's happening is it's hard to keep the alignment perfect for long enough to get it all in. So I think I'll do better like this. There we go. As long as I don't overdo it, I'm good. Why on earth Phillips screws are used for woodworking, I don't know. There. These two obviously are a bit close together, but I was limited. I couldn't put this one any further back because of another piece of structure here. Anyway, it's all going to be fine. Now the last one I'm going to save for when I can actually put the locker in place because I want it to end flush with the end of the locker so that I can put a little ledger on uh, to keep the locker from sliding out. Now that exposes a problem in that getting the locker <laughs> into this lazarette is a bit complicated. And that's because I neglected to actually confirm that the locker would fit in with the lazarette hatches in place. And I know that because it was stored on the other side and it was a beast to get out. But I think I can just barely, there we go, squeeze it in. Of course, it depends on what it runs into once it gets in a bit. There we go. Okay. Now up onto its shelf and into place okay so that's where it's going to sit right there and so i'll do the last one or at least get it started right on the edge here beautiful actually this is uh this is going quite well <laughs> before i get too excited let's just confirm that i can indeed put the cover on and indeed i can excellent 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 Okay, the most miserable part of this project has just concluded. I'll just take this last piece and create a little track for it, basically a little guide to make sure it stays in place. Okay. After the last two, I'm going to have to pull the locker out, which means I have to pull you out. All right, get that done, back up, and it slides home nicely. I love it, I love it, I love it. And a crucial test fit. Yes, very nice, very nice, very nice, very nice. And a nice little bit of mahogany to hold it in place. Okay, hmm, now to be fair, I may have to cut a little notch here because this is where the vent hose is going to go. I think it's going to go, I'm not quite sure where it's going to go. Hmm. Okay, while we're talking about this, I had originally intended to have the through hole come out uh, very low to the bottom, ignore the fact that I can't get all the way down now, um, in this direction, uh, and then loop around and go back. It being the most serviceable, easy to get at, to remove, in that case where I have to remove this to get at the steering um, shiv. Um, now I think I might actually put it here uh, because I can actually make that bend around and with the hose and this is still very, very serviceable. And it means there's no way I'm gonna shear anything off, break anything on this surface. So I won't have anything 
uh, forward of here. Now you might say, well, Peter, why don't you just put it in the bottom, which sounds obvious. Uh, however, it's not because by the time this comes down and loops, it will be dangerously close to the water level. And if any water did get in here by any means, it could create a, a siphon lock. In other words, a a trap. In other words, there'd be water in the hose. And if there's water in the hose, the gas will not be able to get out. So it has to be completely downhill from this through hole to the through hole uh, that's at the transom so that it's guaranteed that it doesn't hold water. So I think it's going to go right there. Uh, but to get it down all the way, I have to cut the end of this little ledgery thingy off. But that's that's no problem. Right. You can go right there for a moment. Already took the screw out, so we're home free. Whew. Now to drill that hole uh, and figure out how I can get to it. With the, there we go. Okay, to make sure there's clearance on the inside, we'll just put it right about here, the crosshair of that and that. Good old butyl tape. Now you might be saying, Peter, if you put the the through hole in the side of the locker well then you're leaving I don't know three quarters of an inch of propane in the bottom of the locker because it won't be able to drain out this is pretty much common practice and that's an acceptable system um, again to to be that much safer about making sure that there's no water ever in the line it's a very acceptable compromise <laughs> Okay, now that I'm just sitting here like this, I was originally going to run this around and out the transom under the swim grid. I'm not quite sure why. I had this image that it would be less likely to get water into it. But you know, in a following sea, you can get quite a kafoof of kafoof. That's 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 a word of uh, of of water coming at your transom. So I think I'm actually just going to go out right here, which is well above the water. Um, and it means that the hose has, the shorter the run, the same total rise means the greater the, the angle, the grade. So the, the more likely that there's, there's going to draw out that propane quickly. So I'm going to put the other through hole right here. Now, before I drill a hole inside of the boat, which seems to be quite low, I'm going to confirm that this is well above the waterline. <laughs> and I'm going to do that by measuring down from this old Wabasto muffler exhaust outlet, which comes through the boat. So basically, if I can determine from this to the waterline outside, I can project this across here and determine uh, down to the waterline where I'm working. Okay, here's our friend. Actually seems closer to the waterline than I would have thought, but anyway, here we go. 20 inches. Probably closer to 21, but got to imagine where it comes out. Hmm. Hmm. Now I don't know if you can see, but there's the uh, the um, cockpit scupper uh, through hull that I was looking at earlier. So it's roughly going to be the same height. Okay, let's go inside and have a look. All right then, so if I'm conservative, there, uh, which is well below where I wanted to drill the hole. But what I think I'll do, because I know I have a um, splash rail out there, is uh, just measure where the other through hull is back here, the cockpit drain through hull, and um, put it at exactly the same height. To that, I have to move this out again. So, I'm sure my shoulders will be well in the way here. Put this back. Okay, got to drill a hole. The last thing to be sure of when you drill a hole in the side of a boat, a wooden boat, is that you drill in the middle of a plank, not on a seam. Um, that will cause you all kinds of trouble. So you got to make sure that you're well into the center of the plank. So 
this line I've put here. Holy mackerel, I am really upside down now. Hanging on my belly. If this isn't unnerving. Woohoo! Okay, with the through hole all prepared with butyl, I'll get back in the dinghy and shove it through the hole. And now being very careful not to lose it back out, let's get the knot on. Good. Okay, so here I have a little bit of hot, slightly soapy water that I'm going to use to warm and slightly lubricate the hose end with. Let that sit in there for a little bit. And on it goes. Okay then, so let me just sort of estimate how much hose I'm going to want to come up to here. Oh, I'm liking this. I'm liking this a lot, actually. I'll cut this with the tubing cutter. Let's put on a couple of hose clamps uh, that we can reach from underneath. That one goes that way. This is gonna go on here. This one will go on this way. Okay, you can put this one on now. If you don't have one of these flexible hose clamp screwdrivers, get yourself one. They are fantastic. Nut drivers, sorry. Under there, beauty. Okay, well, let's warm it up first. There you go. Okay, that should do it. Around the corner. And. And it's done it. Excellent. Excellent. Bring this around. There we go. Oh, I'm feeling pretty good about this. Ooh, and just like that, it's early evening. We're now stern tied and we can carry on down here. Uh, begin with putting a couple of zip ties on this. And this is to guarantee we have a nice downhill slope here. Let's just get that in through there. Right there. What I'm going to find is a proper size P-clip for this eventually, but I know I don't have any that big right now. All right, with the locker installed and the vent on, now we got to set up the gas side. And to make sure that goes in a place where it doesn't run into the cylinders, I'm going to place my two cylinders in. Of the two I have right now, one is a shorty 10-pounder, uh, but that's no problem. It'll go down there. And the other will go right here. And the idea, because they stagger offset, it creates a bit of a space here where I can put the regulator and the solenoid valve. So let's start to lay that out. So the regulator gets these brackets on the back. I'm a little concerned about them that they're going to take up a little too much space, but anyway, let's uh, let's see how that works out. There we go for the um, flare fitting for the hose and the solenoid. All right, and now to put it in place. Now, it's a little uh, wider than I was hoping. Uh, I was kind of thinking it would go about here, but probably back a little bit uh, so I can be sure to get this tank in and out, and I'll check that in a second. I also have to think about how the um, propane hose forward is going to come off this flare fitting and out. I want to go out the side uh, for the same reason I wanted the uh, vent out the side. I don't want any fittings on the end here that could be damaged or any hoses coming through. That'll bite quite nicely in there. Excellent. Now I believe I'll probably put some wood around the outside of this in time to... It's a little flimsy. Excellent. And confirm the tank comes in and out. Easy peasy. 
just gonna leave it out when we put the other fittings on. Okay, and now to run the propane hose, uh, which is a bit long, but that's okay. I'll just coil it up here and uh, zip tie it all together. Someplace safe in here behind the locker. And we'll put some P-clips in all along here. Yeah, this is good, this is good. And the hose is gonna enter about here. Making sure I don't cut into anything on the way out. And for a pipe gland, I'm going to use a piece of pipe insulation. Uh, the nice thing about that is that it's too big for this hole. So by the time I pack it through there, it'll be just perfect. So let me just get a rough idea of where this is going to go. About, okay, I just got to pack this in through the hole. Make that nice and tight. That is as good a gland as I could ask for. And this will swing around and up on to there just like that maybe a little bit longer okay and of course this is a flare fitting so no tape very nice very nice okay then and now it's time for the electrical which i'm glad because it's still crazy hot out here all right then, so now it's where do I install the head unit for the sensor, the alarm unit. And I think probably the ideal location is right about there. It could go here, anywhere really, because all of this is going to be rebuilt. So it's not all that critical. It's a little annoying if all the wires come out of the back. It makes it a little harder to chase, but yeah, we can work something out. Okay, so I've decided to place it here somewhere uh, and I'll have to just make a little chase down behind that somehow. So it's got to take two wires for the two sensors and it's got to take wire to run forward to the panel for power and back to the locker to uh, activate the solenoid. So there's quite a bit to go on back here and the only way to get at this right now is by removing the fridge. <laughs> No, 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 I'm not. I'm gonna put it right here somewhere. And the reason I put it there is because after all, this is all interim. I'm only gonna be using this version of the galley for another, well, frankly, only another couple of weeks. So yeah, 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 don't get, don't get too wound up here. Oh, I can tell you I'm awfully grateful for these pipe chases. Yes, indeed. Oh, yes, okay. Okay, that'll do. Whoosh. Well, fast forward a few days and I'm back in Vancouver. But yes, I did get the wiring done and the stove is working. You can see the head unit is installed down under there and it just worked perfectly. You didn't get to see any of it because during my gymnastics in the bilge earlier this week, I did my back a little disservice to the point where I really didn't feel like filming the remaining tugging of wires and twisting and heat shrinking. So indeed, uh, the stove is working, the sink is working, the galley is functional, and I was able to finish up the cruise with Lady Zephyrus with a fully functional galley. I can't say I started it that way, but anyway, Better late than never. Don't forget, if you want to watch the beer of the week, it's up here.